In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's uh, gospel reading from Matthew, we hear about the uh, approach of a young man to Christ, learning how, wanting to learn how he can enter into the, the kingdom of heaven, how he can gain eternal life. Christ summarizes, he says, you know, you need to follow the commandments. And uh, the young man needed more detail, so he listed all the commandments, the commandments that this young man, no doubt, uh, had heard from his youth up. And as he responds to Christ, he says, I've done all that. I've done all that. Give me something else that I need so I can enter the kingdom of God. Christ, knowing this is a very wealthy young man, a, a rich young man, he says, go and sell all your goods and give to the poor and come follow me. He didn't just say, go sell a portion of it. Or go give the amount to the, to the temple. He said, all of it. He, he laid a very big ask on this young man. And uh, he, he says, come follow me. And the, and the young man was uh, reluctant to do this. He went away sorrowful. And even the apostles were a little bit amazed. Like, how could you ask something of this? How can any of us be saved? When I was a young man, uh, certainly as I got older, this has changed. But there was in our... Uh, I guess in polite society, uh, amongst friends and peers, there's a few things, topics that you want to talk about. Uh, you want to talk about uh, your religion, because it's a very divisive topic. You want to talk about politics. Again, this has changed so much, because it was a divisive thing. And, and you want to talk about money. You really want to talk about money. These are three topics that were kind of taboo. You didn't talk about these things amongst friends and a, amongst co-workers and peers. He just didn't talk about them. Well, in the gospel, Christ talks about them quite a few times. And um, when we come to church, obviously, we, we think we're going to speak about religion. Uh, when we come to church, uh, we, for real, don't ever think that we're going to talk about money in politics. But it's part of the gospel. And today, Christ is offering us an insight into uh, this power of possession, and I mean possession of wealth. This man walked away because the wealth had controlled him. It had a tyrannical hold on him. And so he couldn't give it up. Even though he followed all the commandments. You see, he followed all the commandments. And the uh, Father of the Church says that doesn't mean much. It's a good start, in a sense. We can all follow the commandments and not have any transformation. We can do a checklist rule, I did this and this and this, and not change and follow Christ really at all because there's something that we're lacking in following him and opening up our heart to him. And it's different for all of us. In this case, it was this, this wealthy young man. Christ has a lot to say about wealth, and the church fathers have a lot to say about wealth and money. He says that if you want to be perfect, you have to sell your money. You have to get it, give it all away, everything. That's very hard for us, especially for many of us that maybe are not wealthy. I was like, oh gosh, I have such little now, how could I live off of less? You know, that brings other temptations. Little wealth brings other sins that kind of afflict us. But the fathers say wealth, money, such, such more big of a temptation this is than, than even having lack. And so Christ talks about this often. The fathers are so strong and it says that a, a rich man will never get into the kingdom of heaven as long as there's people who lack and he still possesses in excess. Wow. It's really hard for us to imagine uh, such a, a judgment, right? Somebody lacked and you had excess and you're not entering the kingdom of God because of it. They mince no words, brothers and sisters. This is a very important topic for us. And so we have to understand that we have to do a couple things. We have to not just follow the commandments. We have not just be uh, outward believers and uh, and following the letter of the law and think that we are going to approach judgment day and be in good standing with God. This was an old way of viewing things. Of course, the Jews that we've inherited this faith from Badat, you know, we keep the law and we're in good graces with God. We've been tasked with much more than that. We've been tasked to be perfect. We've been tasked for a transformation of the heart and of the soul, not of just following rules. Our faith is not about rule following. I know that's confusing because we have a lot of rules, but it goes way more than that, brothers and sisters. It's, 
goes to the heart of the matter, literally the heart of us. And how do we change? How do we become new people? We have to dispose of those things which have a tyrannical hold upon us. We can rewrite this, this sermon a little bit, or this gospel a little bit for us. To, maybe not in a Jewish setting. Someone came up to the priest and said, Father, how do I get in to the kingdom of heaven? How do I enter eternal life? The priest may say, go to church, say your prayers, remember God. And I know that many of my parishioners and the Orthodox people that I've met would say, I do all that. I do all that. I follow the commandments. I go to church and I say my prayers. There's got to be something. And we ask why there has to be something more because our hearts know there has to be something more than that. Because we're not transformed. Our hearts haven't changed. And so we know that just saying our prayers and going to church is not it. It's not it because it's just a rule. It's just a beginning. And we know that we got to do something else because we are, our souls are aching for something else. And so we say, okay, you have to get rid of all the passions that afflict you. If you're addicted to wealth, if you're addicted to politics, if you, lust has a hold upon you, if you have a relationship you shouldn't be in, but you're in it, but you just have this attachment you can't break free, if you go to work and that's all you think about is work 24-7, my job, if you are into entertainment and you're a gamer and that's all you do, the morning you wake up and until you go to bed at, at late hours of the night, these all things have tyrannical holds on us. And then the, the answer would be to get rid of it. Flee from it. Break off the relationship. Set boundaries at work. Sell and give some of that money away. Christ commands the rich man to do all of it. Our church says maybe give 10% of it. We lower the bar quite a bit. And in it you're making a sacrifice. In it you're putting skin into the game other than just the bare minimum. And your hearts will change. Because we're really now trying to follow Christ. You know we're following Christ because we're making it hurt a little bit. We're making it feel painful because pulling ourselves away from the attachments to the world is very painful. It's very hard. If it wasn't hard, we would all be saints already. But it's hard and it's difficult. And so we have a, a high calling for us, brothers and sisters, much like this young man we all want eternal kingdom. We want eternal life. We want the kingdom of heaven. But are we really ready? Are we really ready for the prescription? Are we really ready to take the prescription as prescribed? Because all of us have to do that to enter the kingdom of heaven. And this is precisely this. Don't be root followers of the law only. It's just the beginning. It's a good start. But transform your heart by keeping it open and humble and fleeing from those things which have a hold on us that don't allow us to follow Christ. So I leave you with this question. If you left the door today of this church and Christ asked you right now to give up that one thing in your life, that one thing that has the biggest hold on you, that stops you from laying your life down for Christ, could you do it? And each of us have something different that's holding us back. We're all afflicted by the sin and the passions of this world. Can we get it? Can we get rid of it? Can we stop it? Because if we can, then that's how we get our eternal life. If we can walk away from that passion, from that possession of something that's holding us back, then we get eternal life. Many of us may can't do that. I mean, just be like the young ruler here, this young rich man, and says, sorry. I and mean, he would say, it's just too big of an ask for me. I just cannot do it. And we get to that point, brothers and sisters, get on your knees and pray to God, knowing that it may feel impossible for you. But for God, all things are possible, and he will assist us if we give him our hearts. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.